Greetings, my friends. Jimmer Linz here with your source filmmaker tip of the day. Today is tip of the day number 31. And as always, thanks for tuning in, for subscribing to my YouTube channel, and for being cool people. Uh, I really appreciate it. And uh, it's very interesting to me how much notice these little tips of the day have been getting. Uh, and uh, I've been getting a lot of inquiries from various folks, and I really appreciate it. It's uh, very, very flattering. Uh, so for today's tip of the day, I'm going to show you how you can use what Source Filmmaker calls the interpolation falloff to create somewhat different effects for your animations in the motion editor. Now, rather than just try and explain what that means, I'm just going to go ahead and show you. I went ahead and I set up a medic here a little earlier, and uh, I am going to... Uh, I want to make his hand come up, or his arm, excuse me. I'm going to make his arm come up, and I'm going to make it come up so that it reaches the maximum at about one second. So we'll position the uh, the beginning of the selection region here, and then I'm going to go ahead and move his arm. And as we can see, the, uh, the uh, uh, floating transformation layer turns orange. And then if I play this, we will see that his arm just snaps up, which isn't really what I want. Uh, since I want it not to be such a sharp transition, but rather a more gradual one, I'm going to hit the Shift key on my keyboard, and I'm going to scroll the mouse wheel out. And uh, that will produce this uh, interpolation region, or this falloff region, uh, which is currently set to what is called linear. It goes from nothing to 100% of the uh, of the animation I, or the motion that I chose. So we can see that he, is, he raises his arm. Okay, that's very nice. Now I want him to lower his arm as well. So I'm going to bring this over here and we'll have him hold his arm out for about half a second. Again, I'm going to hit the shift key and, and, and drag out a region of this. Shift and the mouse wheel will drag out these regions. So as you can see, I now have a linear uh, linear uh, fade in and a linear fade out of the motion. So when I go like this, and then he will move his arm back down. But what if I want it to look a little bit different? Well, the motion editor gives us a few options in this regard, and there are four of them. They are called linear, which is this one. And then if I hover the mouse over the middle here and I press the number two key on my keyboard, this one is called, I believe, uh, fast fade in. I can't remember for sure. Let me see. You can find out what they're called by going to the keyboard shortcuts. Uh, and you can see that they are right here. This one is uh, Set Falloff Interpolation Ease In. Uh, so that is going to be easing the, uh, uh, easing the transition in and out. So we can see that now his, uh, uh, the, the, the rate of which it applies it is slow at first, but then speeds up. If I hover the mouse over here and I press the 3 key, now it is set to set falloff interpolation ease out, which means that it is slow to apply it at first, but then the animation speeds up. Okay, so as you can see now, it's slow up, slow, or, and then it's relatively fast at first going down, and then slows down, and the last part of it, it eases it out, so the transition goes like that. Now if I hover the mouse pointer over this part and I press the 4 key, now I get the one called Set Falloff Interp Interpolation Ease In Out. So this one eases it in and eases it out. So we get this, it's a, it's a subtle difference, but uh, what this does is it ramps it in slowly at first, then you get a standard transition here, and then it ramps it out. And the same thing on the cutout side. I can also do this and make their, make this just instead of him pausing at the top, now he raises his arm and he lowers his arm. Uh, and if we, oops, excuse me, I don't want to do that. Uh, if you hover the mouse over the, over the selected region in the, in the uh, since I've closed it now, oh, there it is. If you put it over the, over the area here between these two lines, which is where the animation is applied at its maximum, and you press 1 to get linear, 2 to get uh, ease in, 3 to get ease out, and 4 to get ease in and out, well, it applies it to both sides. But, and you might have noticed this happened a moment ago, if you place the mouse pointer over one or the other, I can actually apply, for example, uh, ease out and uh, ease, oh, no, not ease out, there we go. So I can ease it, uh, I can do an ease out and an ease in. 
And so I can make his uh, uh, animation apply slowly at first, then speed up, then fast here, and then slowly uh, fade down. Or I can do this way and mix and match these to my heart's content. Or I could do one linear, and I could do one uh, with, a, with this bell-like curve there. So you can apply it to both sides or just by putting the mouse pointer in the middle. You can apply it to uh, uh, both uh, one or the other, or you can hover it. Gosh, I can't even speak correctly. Uh, hovering the mouse pointer over the one side or the other and pressing 1, 2, 3, or 4 will change the interpolation curve, 1, 2, 3, and 4, uh, uh, from linear to ease in, ease out, or ease in and out. And if you put it over the middle, it will apply it to both sides equally when you're in the motion editor. A little bit of a caveat, by the way. If you're trying to do this to apply stuff to animated models, note what happens if I, for example, press Control and now grab his lower arm. It applied the floating modification layer. So now that particular animation is baked in. And if I go and, uh, not really baked in, but if I go and I make a change here to his, his other arm, it will apply it separately. So now any changes I make to this are separate from the ones that I already did before which is fine, but sometimes if you try and uh, select a region of time like this and then apply uh, changes to more than one object, as soon as you select the other one, the first one's changes are automatically applied. So you've got to make sure that you're happy with the, um, uh, with the way it looks with one of them before you move on to another one. Just a, a little caveat there. All right, so that is your Source Filmmaker tip of the day, how to adjust the uh, falloff interpolation for the motion editor. Again, it's just the number keys on your keyboard. One, two, three, and four will apply uh, the various uh, interpolation presets that we have available to us in the Source Filmmaker. So that's your tip of the day, number 31. I am your host, Jimmer Linz. I sincerely appreciate you tuning in, uh, and I look forward to bringing you the next tip of the day tomorrow. Same bat time, same bat channel. Uh, in the meantime, have a great day and enjoy using Source Filmmaker.